Welcome back to Claire de Lune from Scratch. Okay, now we're approaching perhaps the most, well, one of the most difficult measures of the piece, measure 41. And we're going to obviously take this, in, take this in very small chunks. And hopefully by uh, just focusing on a few small elements at a time, uh, we'll be able to get through this. In particular, I, I was kind of working on seeing if I can come up with um, a creative fingering that can kind of accommodate folks who have never played the piano before. There are some traditional fingerings that involve some tricky gymnastics, you know, and, and th those work well, but they can be a little daunting if you've never, you know, really played the piano before. So I'm going to try to see if I can, I'm, des I'm designing fingerings that are going to try to keep your hands basically in more or less cookie cutter shapes. Nothing's going to be perfect, but I'm hoping that this creative fingering will be comfortable. Do let me know. I really look forward to the feedback. I really appreciate all the comments that I've been receiving on, uh, on YouTube, on, on, uh, and on other emails, and other websites. So anyway, here we go. We're gonna, let's just show you really quickly what we're up against. This is the measure, measure 41, measure 42. Let me just play these two for you so you can kind of see what we're doing. And I'm probably going to just play with my default fingerings just to, because that's what I'm comfortable with professionally, but then I'm going to incorporate and teach you a simpler finger to get through this, okay? So this is what this passage sounds like. And, and then it moves on to this uh, new key signature again. So uh, tricky, a couple things that are happening. You have this really tricky jump and these kind of these turnovers in the left hand that make it, that are pretty tricky because you have to kind of turn over your hand very quickly up and down. And then you have these double notes that are kind of jump climbing down. So a lot of uh, technical nastiness, but I think I came up with a creative solution. So let's take a look at this, okay? Anyway, let's go over to, uh, what I've done is I've created, uh, I went ahead and, and I made some notes. And let me show you, I'm gonna play this first in slow motion, both of these measures. And I'll try to talk my way through how this fingering works. Couple of things. The right hand is gonna come out and help the left hand. I'm gonna have the right hand come to the rescue of the left hand just for a little bit over here. You can see that, okay? And then the left hand is going to be relying on kind of cookie cutter shapes and kind of recognizable hand positions to find notes more easily, okay? And I've also done something kind of unusual with the thirds where I'm trying to avoid, I, I normally don't have a problem with having the thumb on black keys, but in this instance, I'm gonna to try to keep the thumb away from the black key, except for one instance, which is gonna be right over here, um, but I don't think it's gonna make a big deal, but from here, uh, we're gonna have an interesting open hand position to keep our hand flowing nicely. Again, it's gonna rely a lot on the pedal to connect everything. So let me just kind of give you an overview of what these new fingerings are going to, how they're going to work, and then we'll take it apart, okay? So here's what's going to happen. Your left hand is, and let's just start with the right hand first. Okay, we're gonna play this set of thirds, five, and then the right hand, you're gonna kinda of take a little bit of the left hand, par right there, and you're gonna to move to a new position. Now this is the only time your thumb is gonna be on a black key, new hand position. And this is where it's gonna be unusually. Five, four, now I'm gonna to jump to another five, Okay, so we're going to kind of group and then we move a five over again. Okay, so that's slow motion right hand. Left hand, you're going to be over here. Okay, you're, now the key thing is going to be having the fifth finger in the left hand kind of locked in the position to find F sharps all over the place. Okay, so if you can kind of be prepared to have your hand on F sharps like that with your pinky as the anchor, it's going to look like this. And then the right hand takes over, and then we're going to temporarily have our hand repositioned over here with a thumb on the C sharp. Okay, and then I'm going to have your thumb come down here, and then a thumb again, but this time it's going to connect this octave. It's not written very, it doesn't look very obvious, but from here to here is an octave down. So I want to take advantage of that, have my hand position, find that, and again F sharps. And then back to the same position. And for here, because some people might find this weak finger and this second finger hard to roll against, I'm gonna put your thumb up. The thumb is just a much more stable base to kind of have repeated notes on, okay? 
So that's the kind of a slow motion overview. Let me play it, hands together slowly. You'll see how this works. Okay, ready? Faster, okay, so you can hear how it musically works, and I actually think this fingering works quite well. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's kind of full speed, more or less. Okay, so in the next few lessons, we'll take this apart a little at a time, and I'll show you uh, basically how to think through this, and with enough practice, yes, you can get through this kind of most difficult measure, okay? So I'll help you through. I'll see you at the next lesson.